been a while since I've actually been on camera. Usually I'm be usually I'm doing voiceovers. I can well, I could show you a, a loop, I guess. Here, I'll show you a Let me just find one first. Edzi U. I'm from the Yukon. I live in a bus. <laughs> what else do you want to know? pretty much set and we like had tweaked the lighting for ages and we've got this room which has a snake in it hallway and this is my room Creepiest fucking deer in the world. <laughs> and if you want more light on the octopus or anything. Chalkboard wall, which everyone sort of draws on. <laughs> and the next step after this place is just gonna get even better. Like, yeah, it's gonna be ridiculous and just more support from more people to be creatively active. So. Yeah. 
sisters, most of the lot are presumably women and children. There are about 2,100 persons aboard the Titanic. I'm a marine mammal. I uh, am up pissed off because my habitat's been trashed. So I, I'm like giving voice to all those creatures that can't talk about it. In early August 1997, Charles Moore was sailing from California to Hawaii through one of the calmest sections of the Pacific Ocean. Here he would discover a terrible phenomenon, a plastic soup gathered by ocean currents that would later become known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And that collection bag that um, is grabbing everything that has a third of a millimeter mesh, that's a picture of that. And just what I want to emphasize here is that ocean is blue. That's a beautiful blue ocean out there. If you get in a boat and drive out in the middle of the ocean, you're not going to find an island of trash. You're going to find a beautiful blue ocean. What's got me fired up is when I dump that bag out into a petri dish, that's what it looks like. This is not acceptable. This is the plastic soup. And this fish had that in the stomach. Now, the most common consumer plastics act like sponges. Dr. Takata in Japan found that up to a million times the level of the pollutants in the surrounding seawater stick to these plastic bits. Knowing what they knew, knowing that these plastic bits would have been sponging up all these pollutants, as hungry as they were, they decided not to eat these fillets from this fish. It's acting as both predator and prey, even though it's not alive, it's acting like a living substance. It's acting like a living animal. It's catching things and killing them through entanglement. All these different kinds of fish and birds and mammals, you're wearing it, you're sitting in it, your food is delivered in it, you're driving in it, and you're unprepared for the consequences of that. Le prochain gouvernement conservateur sera majoritaire. A strong, stable, national majority. And it is within our grasp to make that dream come true, to become a country that is as prosperous, as united, and as strong as it can be. The best country in the world, but always striving to be more. Harper and his regime cannot continue to blindly tarnish Canada's image on the international scene. We believe we are morally obligated to take a stand. We are many. We are anonymous. The zoos love pandas. We still love them. The politicians love them. I love collaborating with other people, and when I do the stuff with people, it kind of puts me back in that phase again. It gives you new ideas and it pulls you out of your element, too. This, so this is a collaboration I'm doing with a friend and artist of Maya, uh, a friend of mine called uh, Nomi Chi is her name. She had this girl drawn in a bathtub. I paint these characters called Nim Nums. I uh, uh, illustrate children's books. So they're, they're, some of them are, are, are from, from the books that I do. Um, so I just basically adding these characters in, trying to fill in the, the realm now. I get my inspiration from nature. A lot of my characters are combinations of other animals, like hybrids, combine like, uh, you know, parts of a dog with a cat, and then with an elephant maybe for the ears or something like that. It's odd. <laughs> 